His Age by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. Dedicated to his peculiar friend, Mr. John Wicks, under the name of Posthumus. Ah, Posthumus, our years hence fly, and leave no sound nor piety or prayers or vow can keep the wrinkle from the brow but we must on as fate does lead or draw us none none posthumous could e'er decline the doom of cruel prosperpine the pleasing wife the house the ground must all be left no one plant found to follow thee save only the cursed cypress tree a merry mind looks forward, scorns what's left behind. Let's live, my wicks, then, while we may, and here enjoy our holiday. We've seen the past best times in these, will ne'er return we see the seas, and moons to wane, but they fill up their ebbs again. But vanished, man, like to a lily lost, ne'er can ne'er can repudiate or bring his days to see a second spring but on we must and thither attend where ancus and rich tullus blend their sacred seed thus has infernal jove decreed we must be made ere long a song ere long a shade why then since life to us is short let's make it full up by our sport crown we our heads with roses then anoint with tyrian balm for when we too are dead the world with us is buried then live we free as is the air and let us be our own fair wind and mark each one day with the white and lucky stone we are not poor although we have no roofs of cedar nor are brave by yea nor keep account of such a flock of sheep nor bullocks fed to lard the shambles barbels bred to kiss our hands or do we wish for polio's lampreys in our dish if we can meet and so confer both by a shining salt cellar and have our roof although not arched yet weatherproof and ceiling free from that cheap candle baudry we'll eat our bean with that full mirth as we were lords of all the earth well then on what seas we are tossed our comfort is we can't be lost let the winds drive our bark yet she will keep alive amidst the deeps tis constancy my wicks which keeps the pinnace up which though she errs i the seas she saves her passengers say we must part sweet mercy bless us both in the sea camp wilderness can we so far stray to become less circular than we are now no no that self-same heart that vow which made us one shall never undo or ravel so to make us two live in thy peace as for myself when i am bruised on the shelf of time and show my locks be hung with frost and snow when with the room the cough the thistic i consume unto an almost nothing then the ages fled i'll call again and with a tear compare these last lame and bad times with those are past while boshes by my old lean wife shall kiss it dry and so we'll sit by the fire foretelling snow and slit and whether by our aches grown now old enough to be our own true calendars as puss's ear washed over is to tell what change is near then to assuage the gripings of the chine by age i'll call my young tullus to sing such a song i made upon my julia's breast and of her blush at such a feast then shall he read that flower of mine enclosed within a crystal shrine a primrose next a piece then of a higher text for to beget in me a more transcendent heat 
than that insinuating fire which crept into each aged sire when the fair helen from her eyes shot forth her loving sorceries at which i'll rear mine aged limbs above my chair and hearing it flutter and crow as in a fit a fresh concupiscence and cry no lust there's like to poetry thus frantic crazy man god wot i'll call to mind things half forgot and oft between repeat the times that i have seen thus ripe with tears and twisting my ilius hairs doting i'll weep and say in truth botches these were my sins of youth then next i'll cause my hopeful lad if a wild apple can be had to crown the hearth with our less conspiring with our mirth than to infuse our browner ale into the cruse which sweetly spiced will first carouse into the genius of the house then the next health to friends of mine loving the brave burgundian wine high sons of pith whose fortunes i have frolicked with such as could well bear up the magic bow and spell and dancing bout the mystic thirst give up the just applause to verse to those and then again to thee we'll drink my wicks until we be plump as the cherry though not so fresh yet full as merry as the cricket the untamed heifer or the pricket until our tongue shall tell our ears we're younger by a score of years thus till we see the fire less shine from the embers than the kitling's eyne we'll still sit up sphering about the wassail cup to all those times which gave me honour for my rhymes the coal once spent will then to bed far more than night be wearied end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Bad Season Makes the Poet Sad by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Dull to myself and almost dead to these My many fresh and fragrant mistresses Lost to all music now since everything Puts on the semblance here of sorrowing sick is the land to the heart and doth endure more dangerous faintings by her desperate cure but if that golden age would come again and charles here rule as he before did reign if smooth and unperplexed the seasons were as when the sweet maria lived here i should delight to have my curls half drowned in tyrant dews and head with roses crowned and once more yet ere i am laid out dead knock at a star with my exalted head end of poem this recording is in the public domain on himself by robert herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A weary pilgrim I have wandered here, Twice five and twenty, bait me but one year. Long I have lasted in this world, tis true, But yet those years that I have lived but few. Who by his gray hairs doth his lustres tell? lives not those years but he that lives them well one man has reached his sixty years but he of all those three score has not lived half three he lives who lives to virtue men who cast their ends for pleasure do not live but last end of poem this recording is in the public domain. His Winding Sheet by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano 
Newport Ritchie, Florida. Come thou who art the wine and wit of all I've writ, the grace, the glory, and the best, peace of the rest. Thou art of what I did intend, the all and end, and what was made was made to meet thee, thee my sheet. Come then and be to my chaste side, both bed and bride. We two as relics left will have, one rest, one grave, and hugging close we need not fear, lust entering here, where all desires are dead or cold, as is the mould, and all affections are forgot, or trouble not. Here, here the slaves and prisoners be from shackles free, and weeping widows long oppressed to here find rest the wronged client ends his laws here and his cause here those long suits of chancery lie quiet or die and all star chamber bills do cease or hold their peace here needs no court for our request where all are best all wise all equal and all just alike in the dust nor need we here to fear the frown of court or crown where fortune bears no sway or things there all are kings in this secure place we'll keep as lulled asleep or for a little time we'll lie as robes laid by to be another day reworn turned but not torn or like old testaments engrossed locked up not lost and for a while lie here concealed to be revealed next at that great platonic year and then meet here end of poem this recording is in the public domain anacreontic by robert herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Stefan. Born I was to be old, and for to die here. After that, in the mold, long for to lie here. But before that day comes, still I be bowsing, for I know in the tombs there's no carousing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Laurels by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. A funeral stone or verse I covet none, but only crave of you that I may have. A sacred laurel springing from my grave, which being seen, blessed with perpetual green, may grow to be not so much called a tree as the eternal monument of me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On Himself by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Weep for the dead, for they have lost this light, and weep for me, lost in an endless night, or mourn, or make a marble verse for me, who writ for many, Benedicte. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On Himself by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Stefan Lost to the world, lost to myself. Alone here now I rest under this marble stone, In depth of silence, heard and seen of none. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. To Robin Redbreast by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Laid out for dead, let thy last kindness be, With leaves and moss work for to cover me, And while the wood nymphs my cold corpse inter, Sing thou my dirge, sweet warbling chorister, For epitaph in foliage, next write this, here, here, the tomb of Robin Herrick is. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Olive Branch by Robert Herrick. Read for LibriVox.org by Stefan. Sadly. I walked within the field to see what comfort it would yield, and as I went my private way, an olive branch before me lay, and seeing it, I made a stay, and took it up, and viewed it, then kissing the omen, said, Amen. B. Be it so, and let this be a divination unto me, that in short time my woes shall cease, and love shall crown my end with peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Plaudit or End of Life by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Stefan If after rude and boisterous seas My wearied penance here finds ease, If so it be, I've gained the shore With safety of a faithful oar, if having run my bark on ground, Ye see the aged vessel crowned, What's to be done but on the sands Ye dance and sing and now clap hands? The first acts doubtful, But we say it is the last commends the play. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. To Groves by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Ye silent shades, whose each tree here Some relic of a saint doth wear, Who for some sweet heart's sake did prove the fire and martyrdom of love here is the legend of those saints that died for love and their complaints their wounded hearts and names we find in carved upon the leaves and rind give way give way to me who come scorched with the self-same martyrdom and have deserved as much love knows as to be canonized mongst those whose deeds and deaths here written are within your greeny calendar by all those virgins fillets hung upon your boughs and requiems sung for saints and souls departed hence here honored still with frankincense by all those tears that have been shed as a drink offering to the dead by all those true love knots that be with mottoes carved on every tree by sweet saint phyllis pity me by dear saint iphis and the rest 
Of all those other saints now blest, Me, me forsaken, here admit, Among your myrtles to be writ, That my poor name may have the glory To live remembered in your story. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Idyllica by Robert Herrick